Today we're at the computer, which means that we're going to be doing some mixing, and uh, we're going to be looking at the drums for a song that, if I time this correctly, just came out today for a musical project of mine called Little Rumor, and what I'm going to do is just drop the chorus of the song in here right now so you can just hear what the context is, what you know kind of music we're mixing these drums for. I don't want you in my So that's the song, and you could probably already tell whether that's your vibe or not, and if you like it, you'd be doing me a personal favor if you wanted to go check it out and stream it on Spotify, what have you. In any case, shameless plug over, let's mix some drums, and uh, as you can see, we are in Pro Tools, and I think maybe the best thing to do is to just show you a little bit of the processed drums that you just heard, and then show you without all the plugins on. So here's where we ended up. Okay, now let me let me see if I can kill all the plugins here. Bum, bum, bum. All right, and then more or less, this is where I started. Much less inspiring. So let's see how we got uh, to to where we ended up. So. I think where I'll start is with the kick. And actually, what I'll just mention briefly is the way that I tracked this. You can see this is all cut up. And the way I wanted to do the song was I kind of wanted to um, track like break beats or what I thought of as, as like break beats, but track them myself. And I, I tracked three different grooves for chorus, verse, and pre-chorus and have them slightly different, but similar vibes. And then I would just kind of chop them up like loops. So I was sort of sampling myself, if that makes any sense. So starting with the kick, um, I usually start with kick in, which was probably an AK, uh, actually it was probably, it's probably an AKG D112 or, um, or a D6, an Audix D6. So here's the, the kick in, let me turn it up a little bit. Okay, um, I've got time adjuster on here, and the reason I have that is because I was probably trying to mess with the phase to get it better in line with the kick out mic or with some other mic. So if I zoom in here, you can see, yeah, you can see that the kick in is just a little bit ahead of the kick out, obviously. We all know that that's always gonna be the case. So this is me using time adjuster to just get it a little bit better in phase. Okay, my favorite gate just gaty weighty, which is either free or 20 bucks or something. I feel like I got it for free or for cheap at some point. Pretty standard issue stuff here. We're just gating the kick in. Okay, and then some um, some EQ. We've got Pro Q3, and you can see I've got, um, I'm just taking off all of the low, low end, and the reason I'm doing that is because I know that I have a sub kick mic that I'm going to use to get all the really, really low information. So I'm taking that out of the kick in mic. And then I've got this bump at like 80, 80 hertz there. That's what, here's what this is going to sound like. Just kind of cleans it up. Nothing crazy. Adds that little push at 80. Okay. Um, let's look at the kick out. So kick out is a, um, it's a slate ML2. So it's a modeling mic. And what you can see here is, first of all, I've gated it. Oh, and I, I think I just messed up my, what the mix was on the, on the kick in. That's okay. I'm going to try and kind of adjust the volume as I go here. So kick out. Turn this up so you can hear it. Actually, it sounds kind of cool with just the gate, but here's the virtual mix rack. So this is turning it into a FET 47. Okay. Um, and bear in mind that all of this is still going through all of the bus processing for the entire track. So just 
you know, keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, now what I've done is I've, again, cut off all the low lows, and then I've also taken this big scoop, this big chunk out of uh, the low mids right around 272. Here's what that sounds like. So it really kind of neuters the the kick out mic, um, but in a way that blends well. This is something that I, I saw um, Eric Valentine doing, and it really did not make sense to me when I heard each mic individually. But when you hear how they add up, it it totally makes sense. So kind of some 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 genius from Eric Valentine that I stole there. Okay, Smack Attack. Just uh, this is a transient designer, and I'm just adding a little bit of um, attack to the kick out. This was probably close to a year ago that I mixed this, at least six months. So I don't completely have the rationale for all of my decisions here. Vitamin, this is um, like an expander for like a multiband expander. And call me crazy, but yeah, I just took that big chunk out of the low mids and now I'm, I'm adding <laughs> a bunch of low mids back in. Don't ask me why. Okay, turning this back down and then kick in and kick out. Okay, and then I have something labeled here as verse kick. This is a um, this is a sample that uh, that I am triggering, and let's just hear. This is. Oh yeah, so this is a duplicate of the kick out. So I took the kick out and just duplicated it, and then I wanted to keep all the same plugins on there before, uh, or before using trigger to just keep phase, you know, etc. in line. And the sample I'm using is, yeah, this is one of my kicks. I think this is from one of my sample packs. Um, bonus kick one. I think that was from the like dry sample pack. Yeah, it just had this sort of like warm, round, vintagey thing that I was missing from the other mics. And then I've got this little move where I'm just pulling out some low lows and adding in a little bit of low mids. And then finally, I've got the sub kick. And I'm going to go through the processing on this real quick because I want to talk about something else here about the kicks that you might be noticing. So I've gated the kick sub, by the way, is a, um, it was a, like a sub kick microphone that my dad made for me. So it's a, um, you know, like a hand, handmade one. Um, it sounds like this. Very quiet, I know. Uh, I've taken out a lot. I've added Bark of Dog, which is just pumping some extra 62. And 62 is probably the root note of the song. I don't know that for sure off the top of my head, but I tend to do that. Whoa. And it's clipping because I turned it way up. And then Smack Attack. I've added a little bit of, uh, a little bit of attack and removed a little sustain. Okay, and so you'll notice here what I wanted to talk about. First of all, I've got this thing that says kick super sub. That's uh, an experiment that I was trying um, that I ended up just not using. But <clears throat> you can see certain kicks jump in and out at certain points. And it's because I want certain sections to feel more or less full. So you can make a chorus pop more by removing like extra low end. So you can see that the um, like in the intro and then in the pre-chorus and chorus, we've got that sub kick, but I, I just totally take it out in the verse. And then instead I use this punchier kick. So here's all the kicks together. And then you'll see when we get to the verse, oh, sorry, I need to add in this is my bad. I need to add in the uh, bus compression for the kick, for all the kicks. A little compressor, and then some vitamin, adding some low mids back in. Okay, anyways, as I get to the verse,
different flavor. So just sort of a, an arrangement technique there, I guess. Okay, moving on to the snare. So snare top sounds like this. It's a 57. Pretty boring sounding. Okay, we're gonna, uh, this was obviously a frequency that was irritating me. Here's what it sounds like. So I just wanted to tamp down on that. Here's a gate. And I'm kind of, uh, I'm not going crazy with the gate because I'm trying to leave some of the ghost notes in there because um, I am I am adding in some ghost notes. Okay, some SSL, taking out a little mids, low mids, adding in some bottom, adding in some top. This is a very CLA move. Saturn 2, doing some multiband compression, uh, adding in a bunch of uh, this area between like 1,000, between like 1 and 3K. Just getting the crispiness. Okay, I'm going to skip over here to snare bottom, which I gate. Take away a bunch of everything else. Turn it up a little bit so you can hear what's going on here. My levels are going to be totally whack. Okay. Kind of a cool, like, scratchy sound for something that's supposed to sound, I don't know, quote unquote, vintage, uh, modern vintage, that sort of oxymoronic phrase. Okay. Um, adding in a little bit of mid range. Yeah. That really brings it kind of where I'm hoping for it to be. Okay. Snare punch. So snare punch is a sample, and uh, the all the plugins up until trigger are just mirroring snare top because I just want the face to stay in alignment. And then the the trigger is when I say snare punch, I, I mean it's a punch sample. That's that's what it sounds like. It's from a sample pack for uh, people like making films. So. Um, I love putting this underneath kicks, underneath snares sometimes, and then I'm just adding in a little um, low mid. And it's quiet, but here, let me let me see if I can show you with and without and the, the difference it makes. Without. With. Hopefully you can hear that with the headphones. And it's triggered such that it doesn't come in on the ghost notes. It only comes in on the backbeats, which I think just accentuates, you know, the ghost notes being lighter and the, the backbeats really smacking. And then on the snare bus, I've got uh, some 1176 compression. Pretty standard stuff. Nothing really to see here. Okay. Same move here. We're now I'm adding in some top end with a multi-band... Uh, multi um, uh, what am I trying to say? Distortion, <laughs> some saturation, excuse me. I'm adding in some more saturation here with this thing, IVGI, which is free, and I love this. Just kind of clamps down on the high end in a cool way. Some smack attack. I just needed, I just felt like I needed some some click out of it and then vitamin to add in a bunch of cool mid-range again getting this like whatever modern vintage sound just this vintage sound okay kick and snare after i've completely ruined my levels all right and if you're still not impressed let's let's keep going here so overheads Let me remember that that volume was at negative five. Cool. Okay, just taking out a bunch of bottom end that's going to be taken up by the kicks, basically. Using uh, some pull tech to scoop some mid, low mid. Ooh. Hear how that really takes all the character and like the room out of it.
<laughs> it just cl- it really cleans it up, and it's not necessarily good or bad. Sometimes, um, you know, I don't I don't do that move, but for this track, it seemed appropriate. Okay, uh, pulling out a little little more lows and uh, both boosting and attenuating the high end. When you take a pull tech and you boost and attenuate at a certain frequency, you'll you'll sort of like shift the focus of um, of that frequency range. So it's like I'm boosting at 8k, but then I'm attenuating at tw- at 20. So it's like I get the crispiness out of 8k, but then I'm sort of tamping down all of the excess that's happening uh, higher up in the frequency range. If that makes any sense. Okay, API 2500 compressor. Really not doing that much now that I'm looking at it, but I found it necessary. And then this, I've been loving this recently. I think this I also got for free. This is a tape Mellofy and Arturia tape emulation. Um, this man, you can do some really cool stuff with this. So this huge difference. So this sounded fine, I thought, but just like a little too crispy and bright and like shiny and normal and this sounded vintage and old and cool all right so that's the overheads where was the level where were the levels at negative five thank you thanks for helping me with that okay the rooms room sounded like this okay remember this is at negative 6.6 Okay, scooping some mids with the Pultec. Again, just like really focuses up what those mics are doing. A Pro Q3, that doesn't seem to be... Oh, I see. We're just uh, flipping the phase here. This is before I started using Auto Align and not really caring about phase, but... And then some more compression with the API 2500. Super smashy. This is cool. So the fast attack, high ratio, and and um, uh, and fast release uh, is what's getting me that kind of smashy sound. Here's the room and the overheads together. All right, let's start going a little quicker here. Hi hats. Um, I- I've mentioned this before, but H comp this Waves plugin. The only thing I use it for now is if you put it on analog circuit three and you don't even do any compression, it distorts in a really interesting way, uh, and it's different. It does something totally different for every different instrument. So for drums, it has the effect of like cleaning up the signal oddly because it's adding a lot of harmonic distortion. But for whatever weird reason, it sounds like it kind of cleans up the drum. So maybe you can hear what I'm I'm getting at. Just sort of tightens things up. And then I'm I'm adding some uh, very narrow multiband distortion here saturation I guess I was feeling feeling saucy that day and then taking away a bunch of low end that got added in added in mellow uh, this tape mellify again totally transformative and then the limiter just to really clamp down on on uh, you know any errant artifacts, not errant artifacts, it, just to clamp down on the dynamic range. So it just all stays very, very level. Yes, Cole, that's what a limiter does. Thank you. Um, okay, the floor mic. This is uh, an MD21 that I literally just, I just have it on the floor underneath my snare. And I try and kind of use this almost like a third room mic. Um, I like to smash it with some compression and you can see the EQ that's going on here. Here's what it sounds like without this. And 
then with. Just kind of sounds dirty and nasty. It almost sounds like you record it with your phone in kind of a cool way. And again, I try and kind of blend this with the room mics. I forgot what level I had it at. Oh, well. Okay, that's the floor mic. Um, the toms. Now, funny enough, the rack tom only happens for one fill in which I've got like a flanger or something going on. Cool sounding tom. Uh, but I left the, the rack tom track in for the rest of it, and it actually gets through the gate some of the time. So um, the snare is popping through in the tom channel. Anyways, uh, still sounds fine, but that was silly. Uh, tom 2, the floor tom. This happens a little more frequently. You can see this happens in the pre-chorus groove. And then what I've done here is just added some basic like mid scooping. Added in a bunch of mid range. And then added in some more mid-range, essentially, uh, with the help of Saturn. So it's 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 dirty sounding. That's kind of what I was going for. Um, okay, we're getting close. We're getting close to final final mix here, putting it all together. Um, crash i did a crash separately because when i recorded the drums originally i didn't i didn't know if there'd be crashes in this song or not so i just recorded a crash separately here's it on its own whoops hold on here's it on its own but i just kind of wanted something i don't know a little more spacey a little more psychedelic if you will i'm not a very psychedelic person um here's the a little bit of mid scoop Here's just scooping everything. Here's taking, adding in some top end and taking away some 2.5K. Okay, now we're getting weird. Now we're using micro shift. Ooh, now we're adding a little, little weird kind of stereo spread. Now, here's where things get strange. Hmm, okay, okay. A little tape mellify. In context, that sounds something like, uh, sorry, you, you couldn't hear that at all. And all of the plugins, I realized on all the rest of the tracks, the plugins were turned off. So, you know what? I'll come back to that. I'll show you. That was so underwhelming. I'll show you the, the, uh, crash in just a second. In any case. Okay. Drums heat. This is, um, uh, my, uh, bus where I'm sending the entire drum track to, um, this EQ and then smashing it with compression and then also adding a little bit of uh, reverb as well, just to give it a little more space. Um, but let's first talk about the drum bus. So here's the mix without anything that's going on on the bus. Sounds pretty cool, but just a little like, it sounds cool, but not dangerous. It doesn't sound terribly interesting yet so here's a little bit of uh of eq with this q3d which i love this uh this eq just kind of tightening things up it's kind of my catch-all phrase when i don't want to take too long to explain what my thought process was uh saturn 2 again just kind of doing this this broad mid-range bump Now things are starting to kind of get crunchy and sound a little more interesting. Now with Decapitator, same thing. Just adding a little bit of grit at a time. Um, oh, this is uh, this is automated. Um, this is just like a, a, a low pass sweep that happens later in the track, so don't worry about that. Little radiator, this is fun. I got this for free. Again, just, just some more dirt. 
Uh, this also is automated. This just happens during a fill, I believe. Adding some more dirt. So it's just, it's just starting to get, it's not soggy yet, but it's starting to get saturated, right? It's like, it's like the cereal hasn't completely gotten soggy in the bowl. It's just, just starting to, to get saturated with milk. Uh, okay. It's metaphors today. A little bit of high end, a little bit of low mid with uh, vitamin. Uh, a little bit of fresh air, just bringing in some top end. Just a, a nice way of brightening it up without it uh, getting overbearing. And now when I send it to drums heat, that, uh, that bus that I showed you a little bit ago, that's when things start to get dangerous. So you can really hear with and without that bus how all of the like life that I've, I've stolen out of all of these microphones, I kind of put back in with that, um, that bus. So again, without, with, okay. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn all of the, all the plugins on again. And, um, and did I get all of them? Hold on. And now I'm going to show you what the um, what the crash sounds like. Okay, so that crash coming in. Oh my God! Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> Is it not in the group? Okay, here we go. Sorry, here we go. just crazy and in the context of the song sounds something like okay so that's pretty much it for drums um but just as a bonus we'll take a look at percussion here a little bit i kind of wanted to use uh because i was only using three different grooves i wanted to use percussion to kind of mix things up a little bit um so i've got a tambourine on the left hand side this is probably, I think, a ching ring, like a like a Keplinger ching ring. I've got it going through some EQ, some tape emulation. I got another tambourine on the right side. That's that's just a tambourine I probably bought 15 years ago. Some EQ, that same thing with H comp. Uh, it looks like I had a third. Do I have a third tambourine? Oh yeah. What's this one doing? Hmm. This is just in the breakdown, just some verbed out thing. Uh, I've got a shaker, but it's not a shaker. I've gone crazy. It was a shaker, and then I totally annihilated it with this vintage filter. And it just becomes this piece of texture basically i've got another shaker down here this one actually is a shaker i believe not much to see there and then finally i've got a kibasa all together and then with the with the drums let's just do kind of a little drums and percussion jam Okay, so I've probably taken enough of your time. Hopefully, there's something interesting in there that you can take. Again, if you want to check out the song, I'll leave all the links below. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, if you got any questions, let me know. See you next time.